Athletes represent the peak of human potential. They can reflect our hopes and dreams, but they can also reflect our failures and shortcomings. Mental illness affects 35% of elite athletes, which may manifest as stress, eating disorders, burnout, or depression and anxiety. Some risk factors that are heightened in this population are heavy training demands, pressure to perform well, inadequate sleep from intensive training, and stigma related to mental illness in sports. Statistics show that elite female athletes are more likely to be diagnosed with a psychological problem than men and appear more susceptible to difficulties encountered in their environment than their male counterparts. Female athletes were also 56% more likely than males to have suffered from an anxiety disorder over their lifetime. The stigma attached to mental illness is predominant in the athletic world due to emphasis on appearing physically and mentally fit and the belief that mental illness is a sign of weakness. Stigma is the main reason why many athletes with mental health conditions don't seek the help they need. Many athletes fear that disclosing mental health symptoms or disorders could reduce chances of maintaining or signing professional team contracts or major advertising campaigns. Two conditions identified as uniquely impacting athletes are performance anxiety and identity loss. Performance anxiety is one of the most common mental health disorders athletes experience. Moderate levels of anxiety can be beneficial and can improve performance. However, high levels of anxiety can be detrimental to the body and can lead to poor performance. Performance anxiety is an unpleasant psychological state in reaction to perceived stress concerning the performance of a task under pressure. There are two subcomponents of performance anxiety, cognitive and somatic. Cognitive anxiety is the mental component of anxiety, which consists of negative expectations of oneself and success, such as images of failure and negative self-talk. On the other hand, somatic anxiety is the physical component, which consists of negative symptoms such as dry throat and high blood pressure. The physiological perspective of anxiety consists of physical symptoms that affect different parts of the body. The gastrointestinal effects lead to frequent urination, diarrhea, and upset stomach. The cardiovascular effects lead to increased heart rate and blood pressure. Muscular effects leading to twitching of muscles and tremors, which are uncontrolled shaking. And lastly, behavioral effects such as uncontrollable anger, problems communicating, and unkind behavior. The psychological perspective of anxiety includes psychological symptoms such as difficulty concentrating due to racing negative thoughts, difficulties in decision making, confusion, and trouble learning new information. Each sport has a different length of average career that athletes play. Swimmers start training and competing earlier on in their age and continue to compete until their early to mid 30s, whereas other sports, athletes have an average number of years they play. For instance, in the NFL, football athletes play an average of 3.5 years. In the NBA, basketball players play about 4.8 years. And in baseball, baseball players tend to play about 5.6 years. And in the NHL, Hockey league players play an average of 5.5 years. Thus, each sport has a different length of career. Due to the shorter number of years athletes perform, they experience high levels of performance anxiety due to the fear of getting injured and failure. Many sports have higher risk of injury than others. For example, basketball is one of the sports that causes the most number of injuries. Overall, all of these factors can increase an athlete's anxiety and lead to detrimental effects. The other unique aspect that factors into athletes' mental health is their susceptibility to struggling with identity loss or identity crises. An individual's identity consists of multiple groups, such as student, friend, or family member. Each identity has its own roles and behaviors that we as individuals adhere to, and performing these roles and behaviors further solidify our association with that identity. Athletes are particularly susceptible to unidimensional identity, meaning they exclusively identify as an athlete. This occurs due to intense physical and mental demands and the necessity for elite athletes to spend majority of their time being solely dedicated to their sport. This effect is increased in individual sports and sports which the age of specialization is younger. In team sports, Athletes face a unique struggle of separating their perception of themselves as an individual since their identity is so entwined with their team. When this unidimensional identity becomes a problem is when an individual faces instability of their role as an athlete, either due to pending retirement, injury, inability to improve, or other factors that may remove an athlete from their sport. Additionally, 
The demanding nature of high performance sports increases the risk for emotional exhaustion and poor mental health. How much an athlete is influenced in their behavior and emotional reactions to their athletic identity is proportional to their strength of association with their athletic identity. So the stronger an individual identifies as an athlete, the more satisfaction they get from their successes, but also the more they are devastated by their failures. This also translates to how much they're affected by identity crises. So someone who solely identifies as an athlete will struggle more with an identity crisis when they stop playing sport than an individual who has other identities such as being a family member or a friend. You know, but you know, I have an anxiety disorder. When I had my panic attack and had my episode, I was out there on the floor. Many athletes have come forward recently, opening up about mental illness and struggles, and utilize their platforms as a role model to spread awareness, decrease stigma, and empower people around the world to talk about mental health. Men Current research demonstrates that the three main preventative components to address the mental well-being of athletes include mental health literacy, individually focused development programs, and mental health screenings. Mental health literacy programs should be provided to athletes, coaches, support staff, and family to create a culture that values enhancing mental health and well-being. The educational training can be customized to address specific aspects of a sport, such as team versus individual sport, athlete-specific risk factors, how to seek help, and coping strategies to self-manage psychological distress. Individually focused development programs can assist athletes to identify personal goals and acquire the skills necessary to achieve them. This helps develop a parallel non-athletic identity, skills to manage life sport balance, and to prepare them for the life outside of competitive sport. Mental health screening should be included alongside routine physical health checks by medical staff. Screening should provide feedback to athletes to help promote self-awareness such as their mental state and triggers for symptoms. Critical times to screen would include following severe injury and during the transition into and out of sport. So what resources are there available to help athletes struggling with mental illness? In Canada, there are various support lines and resources available. The Canadian Centre for Mental Health and Sport is a registered charity supporting the mental health and performance of competitive athletes, coaches, and performing artists. This organization provides mental health services in person and through telehealth, as well as participates in various research and community engagement initiatives to sustain positive change. Another great resource is Synergy Sport and Mental Health, a clinic focusing on assessment and treatment of mental health and wellness in competitive and elite athletes. Services include psychiatric consultations, treatment plans, and medical management. It gets amazing courage from players to come out and talk about these issues they're dealing with as you can get help. Remember, mentally ill does not mean mentally weak. It is important that we normalize athletes showing emotion and caring about their health and well-being. We have a long way to go, but there is hope looking at the strides that the sports community has made recently. The conversation is beginning to shift and mental health is starting to prevail. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to tune into the Demystifying Medicine YouTube page for more interesting content.